dear students prelims is over and now you must be looking for the reliable answers so that you can decide what should be your next step we at shubhra ranjan ias have always endeavored to provide the authentic answers to the questions with me is our history faculty miss radha gupta we will be discussing not just answers of the questions we will also be doing some trend analysis so that the students who are going to appear next year they understand the trend and we can open up some of the aspects related to the civil services examination as far as prelims is concerned what is going on in the mind of the upsc like what, what is the reason behind asking such type of questions so welcome radha thank you and uh, history has always been i have found that students have some fear as far as history is concerned and in the last few years i have seen that upsc is giving greater focus on history and uh, earlier the thinking was that if you prepare uh, modern india and you can ignore medieval india uh, it's fine but do you agree with this so uh, first of all ma'am i would uh, like to talk about the fear of history which students yeah. often have if we look at history generally what is there in the mind that you have to mug up the dates you have to mug up the achievements of important kings and that becomes the most dreadful thing when it comes to history because it is not uh, often possible to remember uh, a lot of factual details mm. but if we look at the uh, upsc question paper if we analyze the trend it is not only about facts you need to build up on the concepts as well which we will talk about uh, eventually so first uh, looking at the question paper this year so generally there were 18 16 to 18 questions which were being asked in prelims examination and larger focus as you said was on modern indian history but if we look at it used year, to be it used to be like that but if we look at the trend now mm. uh, so i'll do the comparisons as well let's talk about the, uh, this year question paper first so there are around 14 questions okay four of them are from ancient india four of them are from art and culture three of them are from medieval and only three questions have been asked from so it's a complete change it is it's a, a change. complete change and i think in the previous or uh, two three years they were giving this indication they yes, were relatively yes. increasing the focus yes, yes. and the students should have already uh, understood mm. this mm. indication that even medieval and uh, ancient is going to be very very critical in determining the total performance of yours Yes. yes so if we look at last year trend only so in 2022 there were only four questions that were asked from modern india mm -hmm. and this year the question is reduced the number of questions is reduced even more there are only three questions if we look at ancient so it has been 2 3 4 2 and this year four questions have been mm -hmm. asked if uh, we look at uh, let's say medieval india so again the trend is on increasing level so there were four questions two questions again four six this year three and, questions uh, were there. on the basis of the nature of the questions asked hmm. can you suggest like what should have been the primary sources of the students so if we talk about the sources again there are two types of questions which have been asked so first thing is to build a base upon ncerts mm -hmm. because if one is not able to read the ncerts properly they will not be able to answer most mm -hmm. of the questions mm -hmm. so there are there are two ncert kind of, remains the base it remains very important because there are questions which have been directly asked from ncerts and uh, there is often a trend that students ignore those areas mm -hmm. so one needs to focus upon that Uh, on the other hand there are certain questions which requires much more depth knowledge of the subject mm -hmm. so there is these questions are related to the current events for example sangam age okay. was in the news current events in history uh, so you need to uh, learn to relate the uh, you need to learn the art of relating huh. so sangam age was in the news there was kashi tamil sangamam which took place okay. so there is one question on sangam age 
but it is not a very simple question it is a very tough question they have given a term and they are asking the meaning of that okay so these so this of, type of questions how students can prepare so when you have to prepare first you need to read the ncrt's properly mm -hmm. now if we look at the trend so if i talk about modern india let's say so there are certain areas from which upsc does ask the question so they ask from important acts important charter act or regulating act or the reforms that are taking place in british times mm -hmm. so this year if you look at the question there is one direct question on one of the charter acts mm -hmm. yes. that is one area the second area which uh, is the uh, very important is freedom fighters or important events swadeshi movement there is a direct question but it is also related to the current events so national hand moon day was uh, is being celebrated now so they have related it to that so do you question. think that if students have information or facts facts alone hmm. they can answer the questions no that uh, knowledge of facts is very important but at the same time you need to understand the trend you need to build up important concepts on the basis of that there are obviously some questions which you can answer if you know the facts but there are increasing number of questions where you need to apply the logic and if again if we look at this year question paper also which was there in last year paper so you cannot apply the elimination technique that is completely done away with which used to be talked about a lot so if you don't know the concepts you won't be able to answer it so what radha i want that while you discuss hmm. you can uh, be little bit more elaborate so that uh, the students who are going to uh, prepare for the next year Hmm. so hmm. they get some insights beforehand because there is a general impression that uh, prelims is all about facts and information hmm. Hmm. right so please discuss it little bit elaborately in shubhra ranjan ias i always make an effort that the teacher who teaches a particular subject should have the necessary minimum qualification in the subject that person is taking so radha she comes from the delhi university she has done her masters from ramjas college which is well known for history and that's why i think that we can trust on her not only knowledge but also her wisdom of history as far as uh, the concepts is concerned so i thought uh, it's worth to mention the background of the teacher so that uh, you can be uh, more comfortable in the answers and explanations and as well as uh, though we are uh, giving you discussion but i have requested all the teachers to be present live tomorrow will you be available tomorrow yes. somewhere around 5 o'clock sure okay uh, where you can go through the discussions if still you have any doubt so radha will be there to handle your doubt so that we can be very very sure about what is to be done in the next step okay and yes radha uh, as the prelims is over hmm. and uh, i believe that even in uh, mains hmm. the role of culture is going to be increased because today itself we have seen uh, inauguration of parliament and uh, the prime minister is uh, giving significance of some sound goal he was yes. talking about so as india is uh, uh, rising and emerging the identity of india is uh, very much because of its culture so it's very natural because see the nature of the questions i feel uh, changes according to the requirement of the administration fine so we should also be knowing that why they are putting so much focus on culture because we are emphasizing so much on our soft power in international sphere and i think that uh, it's it's like i don't know why students but i always found uh, learning culture very inspiring because you feel good that you are a part of that civilization this is my natural feeling and uh, so what i say that as far as some subjects are concerned and if you want to improve your performance you should have a very strong reason fine so just don't think ki culture i have to study uh, for uh, just uh, 
clearing or prelims etc but it is a part of your identity it will give you a lot of confidence as a person that you belong to such a rich culture and heritage so now i will request radha would you like to say something or should we go for discussing we can answers. do the discussions because there are a lot of points which you have already talked about yeah so, one thing uh, now since the prelims is over i will yes. tell students not to think too much on the paper because mm-hmm. what is done cannot be undone so they should start preparing for mains whatever is the performance fine so do you have something special as far as the art culture and the history part of uh, gs paper 1 is concerned so ma'am as you rightly pointed out that the focus is very much upon art and culture and uh, we can understand the reason as well because when we are talking about our present we need to be aware of our past as well mm-hmm. when british are also coming they are also focusing upon india's ancient past yes, and of course so that thing is there we cannot be proud of our present unless we know our past properly so this thing is happening again that there is an increasing focus and there are certain topics which needs to be done in a very good manner in a very comprehensive manner so that is something that one needs to be aware of what are the important topics and even in those topics what are the aspects that we need to focus upon so that we are able to develop our writing skills accordingly we are able to focus upon the keywords we are able to understand the demand of the question we are able to address every aspect of the question that is asked and there is so much and the challenge in the mains answer is to give very substantive answers in a limited word which will come with lot of practice and lot of brainstorming so uh, what is preparation on your part for our students who are going to do mains uh, because we will be starting the test series come crash course for general studies also so uh, how you have geared up to help our students so ma'am to provide so in this examination the proper mentorship is very important because mm-hmm. students are not often students are not able to find the important topics and they are not able to understand the demand mm-hmm. how one should study it so we have prepared a crash course as you have always been doing in psir and the results are visible to yes. everybody uh, today so in the same manner we have tried to prepare a crash course along with the test series where we are going to give um, uh, details on important topics and every important aspect related to that i topic. believe that uh, in the test series you will uh, be honing their skills so that uh, expected unexpected all type of questions they do which is uh, a matter of satisfaction for them so now radha ma'am will discuss the questions and she will also analyze so over to you thank you ma'am so now we are going to discuss this year's prelims question paper gs1 and uh, i'll be doing the history and art and culture sections with you so if you look at this year's question paper it was some of the areas were moderate and some of the areas were relatively difficult in nature so if we divide it into four parts there is art and culture ancient medieval and then modern so questions from art and culture was relatively moderate in nature if you look at ancient and medieval they were difficult if you knew the answers you could have solved it otherwise one would not be able to solve those questions so they were difficult ones again coming to modern india the questions were relatively simpler if you have read the basic books you will be able to solve them so that was the nature of the questions if you look at the question paper there are around 14 questions which have been asked so there are 14 questions and in these 14 questions four are from art and culture four are from ancient india these two areas overlap a lot of times so you can say around eight questions were asked from ancient and art and culture three questions were from medieval india and three questions were from modern india okay so when we look at the nature of questions if i talk about art and culture ancient and medieval 
what we have looked at in the last few years that the questions are being asked on regional dynasties in regional on regional dynasties also they have often asked questions on sangam dynasty even in last year question paper there was a question on sangam dynasty they have asked about vijayanagar empire they have asked about chola empire they have asked about stoop and temple structures they have asked about important texts so text is becoming important every year so again there was one question from texts as well in this year question paper they are asking about important sites they are asking about important terms they are asking about important kings and their achievements that is one thing that is being asked in ancient art and culture and in medieval india so when you look at these questions when you look at this year's question paper you will realize that most of the questions are revolving around this theme only again buddhism and jainism becomes very important so in stoop in text in sites that area is already covered okay so these are some of the important topics and in this year question paper also questions were asked from these very topics only but what has changed the change is that they are asking questions which require much more in depth knowledge that is one thing that is increasing so you cannot solve these questions only by reading ncerts though you do need a deeper knowledge of ncert but you also need to keep an inquisitive mind you need to look at important current events if somebody is referring to a particular ancient tradition if there is an important excavation that is going on and that has been in the news you need to have a knowledge of all those things and you need to be able to relate it to the static topics then only you will be able to answer most of the questions okay so this is one skill that one needs to develop now even while studying history when we talk about modern india so there are again certain traditional topics for example charter act important freedom fighters important events related to uh, the struggle for indian independence uh, details about companies for example dutch east india company portuguese east india company british east india company reform movement these are relatively the areas from where questions are being asked constitution is another area from where questions are often asked if you look at this year's question paper also all the three questions fall in this realm okay so you need to be able to identify the important topics that is one thing if you are able to do that you will be in a better position to prepare for the examination after that you need to be able to understand what are important current events and how they are related to the static portion of history the third thing that i talked about is that you need to be able to understand the importance of excavations or new sources that are coming to light every day writing history is not a static uh, a static uh, uh, process so there is always excavations or there is always coming of new inscriptions new coins new texts are being read and history is also being revised okay so this is also one thing that you need to focus upon now okay so these are broadly the things the trend that has been there now i would discuss each question with you which was asked in this year's examination okay so the first question is in which of the following regions was dhanya katak which flourished as a prominent buddhist center under the mahasanghikas located so if you look at this question which in which one of the following regions was dhanya katak which flourished as a prominent buddhist center under the mahasanghikas located so this question is related to the site part which we have discussed that they are asking you about important sites they are asking about important buddhist sites to be precise okay so dhanya katak is another name for amravati so this is one question if everybody has studied about amravati because it was one of the capitals of satavahans amravati stoop is also a very prominent stoop when it comes to the history of 
buddhism so this is one thing that we know while preparing for upsc now if they are giving the name dhanya katak here this question becomes difficult if you are not aware of this name that this is also used for amravati you will not be able to answer this question there is no elimination technique that you can apply here so if you know this term that dhanya katak is related to amravati you will be able to answer that it is present in andhra area what was another name that was used uh, for dhanya katak or amravati that was andhra nagari so our answer is going to be a okay now this second question which is the relatively easier question with reference to ancient india consider the following statement the concept of stoop is buddhist in origin stoop was generally a repository of relics stoop was a votive and commemorative structure in buddhist tradition how many of the statements given above are correct only one only two all three none so this kind of option this kind of trend in options that was very much there in last year's question paper as well and you must have realized that now you cannot apply elimination technique here you need to be sure of these options then only you will be able to answer the question correctly now looking at the nature of this question this is directly related to buddhist architecture and it is a pretty simple question if you have read your basic ncert so now the concept of stoop is buddhist in origin so we know that the concept of stoop predates buddhism it is not buddhist in origin so the first option the first statement is wrong the second statement is stoop was generally a repository of relics so if you study the buddhist architecture the structure of anda that is uh, actually having relics either of buddha or of important buddhist monks okay so that is going to be a repository of relics so this is a right statement stoop was a votive and commemorative structure in buddhist tradition so this is again a right statement votive something which is related to veneration okay so when we are talking about votive structure it was a votive structure it was also a commemorative structure because it is containing the relics either of buddha or of important monks so this is also going to be commemorative in nature okay something which is being made to remember somebody or some important event or some important thing okay so this statement is also going to be right so second and third statements are right first statement is wrong so our answer is going to be b only two this was one of the questions which you could have solved if you had studied your ncert properly now the third question which is there with reference to ancient south india korakai pompuhar and muchiri were well known as so this is again one question if you know these terms if you know these sites then only you will be able to answer this question otherwise you won't be able to answer this question okay so let's look at these sites if you know muchiri which is also known as muziri it is in uh, on malabar coast in present day keral region this is often in news due to the excavations that are happening there so if you know about muziri that it was an important ancient port you will be able to answer it even if you don't know about porakai or pompuhar okay so mujiri has been in the news this is one of the important port cities in keral region okay so mujiri in keral region when we are talking about uh, korakai that is in present day tamil nadu region pompuhar when you when uh, you were studying about sangam era there is this mention of the city of puhar this is the same city pompuhar and puhar city was a very important flourishing trade center which was also a port city during sangam period and many of the sangam texts talk about the city of 
puhar again i talked about the fact that sangam period was in the news in last year also there was a question on sangam period so here pompuhar again becomes very important and this is one of the important port cities from ancient south india so our answer is going to be b which is ports okay now the fourth question was a difficult one so the, if you look at this question what is the question which of the following explains the practice of vatta kirtan as mentioned in sangam poems so this question is about sangam age this is something that one could have predicted but if you look at the term that they are asking they are asking what is the practice of vatta kirtan so if you don't know this that's okay because it is a very difficult question and in upsc there are certain questions which are meant to be left this is one of those questions okay so let's look at the options what are the options that have been given kings employing women bodyguards learned persons assembling in royal courts to discuss religious and philosophical matters young girls keeping watch over agricultural fields and driving away birds and animals a king defeated in the battle committing ritual suicide by starving himself to death so the answer is going to be d vatta kirutal is a practice where a king who has been defeated in the battle is going to commit a ritual suicide by starving himself to death and sometimes the king used to do it alone sometimes you will see that this practice is being done in groups so the loyal officers or royal people who are there with the king they also used to practice vatta kiru tal okay so the right answer is d now if you have not been able to attempt this question you do not need to worry about it there are other questions which we need to look at now this is a question about regional dynasties what is the question consider the following dynasties hoysal kakatiya gehadwal yadav okay so if you look at again the current happenings there has been an instant talk about paying uh, adequate attention to regional dynasties so one question on regional dynasties is there and this is something this is a trend which is very much visible in the past uh, years question papers as well so what but here do you need to know everything about these regional dynasties if you look at the question that has been asked here you need to apply logic what they have asked how many of the above dynasties established their kingdoms in early 8th century ad they are saying early 8th century ad if you look at the name of these dynasties hoysal kakatiya gehadwal yadav all of these dynasties have been established and have been ruled roughly from the area of 11th to 14th century ce or ad how can you answer this question if you have read your ncrts properly gehadwalas come when they talk about rajputs their origin is not in early 8th century ad we study them in our ncrt with respect to gajnavid and gorid invasions kakatiya hoysal yadav when you must be reading alauddin khilji delhi sultanate period all these dynasties have been there uh, when they are talking about the invasion that is happening or the wars that uh, that is happening with south indian dynasties so all these dynasties have been mentioned there so if you have studied it with respect to delhi sultanate they are not going to be there in 8th century ad this is one of the logics that you can apply okay because most of the dynasties rule for 2 300 years okay so that is one thing that you can answer and the answer is going to be none here even if you don't have a lot of knowledge about these dynasties but you have read your basic books you will be able to answer this particular question okay now come to the next question which is there with reference to ancient indian history consider the following pairs what are the pairs this is a question on literature again 
a question on literature has become the feature of upsc prelims examination okay and these texts are often uh, from ancient or medieval india so let's look at the pairs devi chandragupta bilhan milind panha nagarjun hamir mahakavya uh, naya chandra suri neeti vakya mitra uh, that is somadeva suri okay these are the four pairs that have been given now you have to tell how many of the above pairs are correctly matched here also there are certain texts which are well known there are two texts at least two texts the third uh, second and fourth one which are not very well known so let's discuss this question this is moderately difficult you can say devi chandraguptam is a text that was composed by vishakha dutt not by bilhan so this is one text which is talking about a king from gupta dynasty ramagupta so this pair is not correctly matched because this is one text which was composed by vishakha dutt in sanskrit language a very important text from ancient india okay this pair is not correctly matched now milind panhu by nagarjun so milind panhu by nagarjun is a very important text and one is expected to know this when one is his, one is reading the history of buddhist literature okay so milind panhu is a text about a talk a conversation that takes place between the king milander or milind both are the names of the same person and nagarjun or nagasen okay so this is one of the very important texts from ancient india about buddhist tradition how nagasen is con uh, convincing the king menander or milind to convert to buddhism this text was written originally in pali language okay so this is correctly matched now the third uh, option uh, this, uh, this option is hamir mahakavya uh, by nayachandra suri so this was a jain person jain uh, scholar and he has written this particular text so it is correctly matched what is hamir mahakavya all about so hamir mahakavya is a biography of the king hamir you must have studied about the battle that took place between alauddin khilji and hamir dev so it is about those events okay so this is again a very important text it is not a contemporary text to hamir dev it is a later text which was composed during 15th century uh, ce okay so this is also correctly matched now the other pair that is there neeti vakya mrit okay so the translation of this is going to be uh, nectar of a uh, political treatise okay so what is the duties of a king that is something that is mentioned in neeti kavya amrit and it was composed by somadeva suri again in sanskrit language three of the texts are composed in sanskrit language this one is in pali language okay so this is again a correctly matched pair this was a moderately difficult question and uh, the answer is going to be c only three because devi chandraguptam is uh, not composed by bilhan it is composed by vishakha dat now let's look at the next question souls are not only the property of animal and plant life but also of rock running water and many other natural objects not looked on as living by other religious sects the above statement reflects one of the core beliefs of which one of the following religious sects of ancient india this is a pretty simple question when you are studying the philosophy of buddhism and jainism the very basic philosophy of buddhism and jainism you will see that jainism talks about souls belonging in both animate as well as inanimate objects so jainism says that souls are the property even of rocks of water of air and that is why we should not even practice agriculture because you are going to harm the earth you are going to harm the worms so jainism is one of the religions that is propagating the idea that souls belong to both animates as well as inanimate 
object so this was a pretty simple question which could have been answered if you have read your basic books so the answer is going to be b jainism okay now coming to the next question which among the following rulers of vijayanagar empire constructed a large dam across tungabhadra river and a canal cum aqueduct several kilometers long from the river to the capital city this is a question from vijayanagar dynasty and the options that are given are devaraya 1 mallikarjuna veera vijaya and virupaksh now if you look at this question and if you have read your old ncert you will be able to answer this question that the answer is devaraya 1 this direct this is a statement which have been directly uh, taken from your ncert books so uh, in, in that chapter uh, the chapter talks about the important military uh, accomplishments of devaraya 1 and then it talks about his irrigation efforts and how he is able to provide water supplies to the city of vijayanagar or hampi so from there the statement has been taken and if you have read your ncert you will be able to answer this question that the answer is a devraya one is the person who is uh, conducting many successful military campaigns as well as focusing a lot upon the uh, irrigation facilities provided by the state okay so uh, this was a relatively simpler question if you have read your basic books properly the answer is a devraya one now the next question who among the following rulers of medieval gujarat surrendered deu to portuguese ahmed shah mahmud baghra bahadur shah and muhammad shah so again this is a direct question from spectrum this is again according to the trend they have been asking you about dutch east india company or french east india company or british east india company or portuguese east india company so here if you look at this question this is again directly taken from your spectrum where uh, they are talking about portuguese uh, uh, portuguese uh, east india company in india so there is the uh, there is this detail about uh, nuno di chunha in your uh, spectrum where they are saying that nuno di chunha came to india as the governor of portuguese occupations here in 1529 and how he is also trying to win some of the territories from the ruler of gujarat what he is doing he is shifting the base from cochin to goa at the same time what is happening that the sultan of gujarat what uh, is happening there that he is in direct conflict with mughals and when portuguese are also going to attack this person is choosing to make peace with portuguese and he granted some of the areas of uh, basain and nearby areas to portuguese and he is also signing a treaty on 25th of october 1535 and surrendering deu to portuguese a decision which this person bahadur shah is going to regret very soon when mughal threat is going to received so again if you have read that book and you are able to understand the importance of portuguese and how they were playing a role when it came to conflicts between indian indian rulers you will be able to answer this question the right answer is going to be c bahadur shah okay now the next question which is from modern india by which one of the following act was the governor general of bengal designated as the governor general of india again this is one thing that you should have studied they often ask about important charter acts or important reforms that were being done by british uh, british rule okay so here they are asking which one of the following acts was uh, by which one of the following acts was the governor general of bengal designated as the governor general of india the regulating act the pits india act the charter act of 1793 the charter act of 1833 that is this is a pretty simple question the charter act of 1833 is going to make the governor general of bengal 
into governor general of india and the first governor general of india was william bentinck which is also related with the uh, sati reform which was done the uh, sati regulating act which was passed in bengal okay so the answer is going to be d it is again a very direct question from your ncert and your uh, spectrum book so if you have read your basic books you will be able to answer this question the next question which is there which is a tough question i would say what are they asking they are asking with reference to the indian history alexander d a h longhurst robert steven james burgess and walter eliot were associated with how many of these uh, are associated with archaeological excavations establishment of press in colonial india establishment of churches in princely states construction of railways in colonial india so this is one of the questions which cannot be answered very easily it was a very difficult question i would say what is the answer the answer is archaeological excavation all these people were related with archaeological excavations which were taking place so when you were studying british uh, east india company and their endeavors in india you must have studied about the antiquarians how there were certain people who were trying to understand the past of india and there were a lot of excavations which were going on there was translation of sanskrit as a pali prakrit as well as persian texts into english language to understand the past of india and these are some of the people who are related with some important archaeological excavations so if you look at alexander lee uh, re, he is associated with the excavations in pallavaram if you look at uh, longhurst he is somebody who is associated with excavations in nagarjun konda one of the very important stoops uh, related to buddhism so it is a very important site for buddhism robert seville again associated with excavations at amravati again a very important buddhist site james burgess he is founder of indian anti very he is also associated with excavations in elephanta and ajanta area again a very important site for buddhism okay walter eliot is associated with studying uh, inscriptions as well as coins so if you look at most of these names first of all it is uh, well established that they are related with archaeological excavations second thing that you need to understand here that more or less these people are associated with excavations at important buddhist sites okay so this question is indirectly related to history of buddhism in india but they have gone in a lot of depth while asking the question if you have not been able to attempt this question again you don't need to worry about it because it was one of the difficult questions in this paper the answer is going to be a okay the next question that is there is consider the following pairs site well known for besnagar so shaivite cave shrine ignore this shaivite cave shrine bhaja buddhist cave shrine sitnavasal jain cave shrine they are asking how many of the above pairs are correctly matched here again you cannot apply elimination technique to large extent okay so what are they asking they are asking see these two sites you must be aware of if you have studied your ncrts properly indian culture the ncrt that is their 11th class fine arts ncrt you will be able to uh, know these two sites that bhaja is a very important buddhist cave shrine that is there in maharashtra state of india sitnavasal a very important jain cave shrine from tamil nadu region these two are pretty simple answers if you have read your ncrt properly what is tough base nagar whether it was a shaivite cave shrine or not so base nagar is near present day sachi that is in madhya pradesh okay when excavations were happening there cunningham is the person who is associated with the excavations there and he has written extensively on 
द साइट ऑफ बेस नगर विच वॉज ऑल्सो नोन एज भिलसा ओके और विदिशा सो देर वी फाइंड बुद्धिस्ट रेलिंग्स प्राइमारीली दैट इज असोसिएटेड विद बुद्धिज्म इफ यू लुक एट पिलर देर इज वन ऑफ द पिलर दैट इज फाउंड देर एंड द कैपिटल इज गरुड़ कैपिटल If you look at that as well, you will not be able to say that this was a Shaivite cave shrine. This is primarily related to Buddhism. Okay, so Bees Nagar is going to be uh, not correctly matched. It is incorrectly matched. These two pairs are correctly matched. So your answer is going to be only two pairs. Okay. So this is your right. answer now coming to the next question which is again from modern india what is the question consider the following statements statement 1 7th august is declared as national handloom day statement 2 it was in 1905 that the swadeshi movement was launched on the same day what are they asking how many of the above pairs are correctly matched here what you have to look at you have to look at the statement both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 both statement 1 and statement 2 are correct and statement 2 is not the correct explanation of statement 1 statement 1 is correct but statement 2 is incorrect statement 1 is incorrect but statement 2 is correct here what is the requirement of this question you need to know about both the statements whether they are right or not and second how they are related with each other that is also something that you will have to know so now let's look at the statement once 7th august is declared as the national handloom day so it was declared national handloom day in 2015 so that is a correct statement it was in 1905 that swadeshi movement was launched on the same day this is also a correct statement uh, in 1905 on 7th of august uh, swadeshi movement was launched from calcutta town hall both the statements are correct these two options cannot be true what we need to establish we need to establish whether statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1 or not so swadeshi movement was about boycotting british goods okay and it was there was the focus on swadeshi the indian handloom industry when 7th of august was declared the national handloom day it was declared the national handloom day to again promote the handloom weaving industry of india okay so there was the direct relation between the two and it was launched on 7th of august because swadeshi movement was also launched on 7th of august so both the statements are true and statement 2 is the correct explanation for statement 1 okay so a is going to be our right answer here what you do need to know you need to know about the current events that are happening and how they are related with our past if you have this basic knowledge you will be able to answer this question pretty finely because statement 2 is very simple if you have read about swadeshi movement you must have read about swadeshi movement if you are preparing for upsc that is a direct statement from there and how it is related to national handloom day okay so you need the information which is there in current events you need the historical information as well and you need to be able to relate the both okay that is the key here so a is our correct option this was a simpler question okay the next question is again uh, in this form only statement form consider the following statements with respect of the constitution day statement 1 the constitution day is celebrated on 26th of november every year to promote constitutional values among citizens statement 2 on 26th of november uh, 1949 the constituent assembly of india set up drafting committee under the chairmanship of dr b r ambedkar to prepare a draft constitution of india the same options are there both statements are 
uh, you need to know whether both statements are correct or not. The second thing you need to know whether the statement 2 is the correct explanation of statement 1 or not. Here, if you look at this question and if you are reading it in hurry, you will think that statement 2 is correct. Why you will think that? Because there is this date, 26th of November 1949. There is the name B. R. Ambedkar, drafting committee, chairmanship. The question is about constitution day. Here you need to pause a little bit and you need to read the question again. The question is, the constitution day is celebrated on 26th of November every year to promote constitutional values amongst the citizens. This is the right statement. On 26th of November, we do celebrate constitution day every year to promote the constitutional values among citizens. Let us look at the statement too. On 26th of November, the Constituent Assembly of India was set up. So, is this date correct? If we talk about the setting up of Constituent uh, Assembly, when we talk about drafting committee, it was set up on 29th of August 1947. So, this statement is incorrect. What happened? on 26th of November 1949. Why this date is important? Because Constituent Assembly adopted the Constitution of India. When did it come to effect? 26th of January 1950. Okay, when we uh, celebrate Republic Day now. So, this statement is incorrect and when the statement is incorrect, statement A and B, they do not hold any value for us. The statement C is going to be correct because statement 1 is correct and statement 2 is incorrect. So, that is going to be our final answer. This was also a simple question if you know about the important details in the drafting of the constitution. Okay. So, these were some of the questions, that, these were the questions that were asked in today's prelims examination. I hope uh, this explanation helped you and here again as in the beginning I told you that you need to read your NCRTs properly but along with that you need to be aware of the current events that are happening. You need to be able to relate the two. You need to become more inquisitive in terms of asking questions and understanding the conceptual details because that is something that UPSC is requiring now. Another thing that we have talked about is that there is an increasing focus on art and culture, ancient and medieval Indian arena of Indian history, which was often ignored by the aspirants earlier. So, you need to uh, understand this particular trend and you need to read these areas properly while preparing for this examination. Uh, watch this video and if there are any doubts, we will be live tomorrow. You can ask any questions, any queries which are related uh, with the examination, whether with this paper or with the preparation of the upcoming mains examination. Thank you.